Hello and welcome to City Beat. It's hard to believe, but this is our first show for 2016. I hope your new year is off to a great start. Ours is, and it'll be off to an even better start, I think, once you see this show about our Citizens Academies. We have four different Citizens Academies that we're gonna focus on during today's show. They're gonna offer a behind the scenes look at our services, the employees who provide those services, and a few could even save your life. So you'll definitely wanna stay tuned to the show. I'm your host, Tamika Keenan Norman, and City Beat is coming up next. How many local artists are in the Twin Counties? More than 600 talented people are creating wonderful works of art in studios and workshops all across Nash and Edgecombe. Did you know that a total of 152,800 people live in Nash and Edgecombe counties? That's a larger population than High Point or Wilmington. Twenty three thousand students are taught by fifteen hundred teachers in all of the public and private schools in Edgecombe and Nash. We don't kid around when it comes to education. Hello and welcome to City Beat. This show is going to be jam-packed because we're talking about all of the Citizens Academy that the City of Rocky Mount offers. And we're going to start with our main Citizens Academy. And here with us today is City Employee and Coordinator for that program, Loretta Braswell. Hi, Loretta. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. First time on City Beat, so welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, first, introduce yourself to the viewers. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do with the Citizens Academy. Okay. I'm Loretta Braswell. As you mentioned, I'm a retiree uh, from the city of Rocky Mount. I worked 36 years and uh, I retired in 2010. And right before I retired, I started along with Ann Wall, who is our former uh, assistant city manager, and Elaine Henderson, who was our human resources director, we started the academy. Mm -hmm. And um, I was called by um, Ann Wall back in 2011, and she asked if I would come and, and help with the academy. And I said, when, when, I'm ready to come. <laughs> And it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and she said, can we get through Thanksgiving first? And I came that Monday, and I've been working with it ever since and loving it. So you were just really excited about getting it started. Excited. Mm -hmm. So what is the Citizens Academy? The Academy is an opportunity for citizens to learn uh, about city government firsthand. Mm -hmm. Uh, they get a chance to learn uh, and actually see some of our employees that do the work daily. Mm -hmm. They get a chance to learn about various boards and commissions, and they become ambassadors for the city, which I think is, is very important. Mm -hmm. And they have been doing a great job of that as well, because I've met some of the participants from previous years, mm -hmm. had a chance to talk to them, and they really are spreading the word about the Academy. But this year it starts on March 3rd, I believe, That's right? correct. Mm -hmm. Can you go over over sort of a schedule of what participants can expect. Okay. We get started on March 3rd, and this is a 10-week program. Uh, and the first session, the citizens get an opportunity to go on a tour. Mm -hmm. And that's always fun for them because a number of our citizens have not seen some of the facilities that we operate. Then the following, um, and let me just say that uh, we do the history of Rocky Mountain, mm -hmm. and they love that. And Steve Raper, who is our former city manager, does a good job with that, and he enjoys it too. Uh, and the following week, we will have uh, a presentation by the city manager, Charles Penny. Forms of government is covered in that session uh, on public affairs, mm -hmm. and you do a good job with Thank that. Thank you. Uh, the city clerk, the uh, finance director makes a presentation uh, and we talk about the budget. Then the following week, we go over to the police department and have a presentation by Chief Moore and members of his staff. Then the next week, we talk about water, wastewater, and storm water, where we actually go to the, to the water plant. And this is usually interesting for our citizens because they have no idea about how our water is processed. 
and they usually <clears throat> enjoy that. And we always tell them that Rocky Mount, uh, over the years, Rocky Mount has been voted having the best water in the state mm -hmm. of North Carolina, so we kind of brag about that. The following week, we talk about transportation, the environment, and our transit system. Then we go to <coughs> in energy resources, and we talk about utilities, and we have a presentation from the WARM program, and they get to learn about ways to, to uh, conserve energy and things of that nature. Then uh, our planning director talks to them about development and uh, we have the gentleman from the chamber who actually is paid by the city to talk about business recruitment and they always like that because they want to know what's coming to the city. Then we have parks and, and recreation have a presentation from them then the fire department and they like that uh, seeing the fire trucks and uh, talking about all the different programs that are it within the fire department. Then human resources and human relations make a presentation. So it's a full schedule. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, have graduation that following week. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, a few years ago, you all did uh, some fun stuff too, mm -hmm, like you mm -hmm. made um, some clay molds mm -hmm. and other things like that. Are there any other fun activities that folks can engage in this year as well? Well, you mentioned that. That's, that really is fun for them because we find that when, when the participants go to the Imperial Center, a number of them have never been there. Hmm. They said, you know, we've never been here. We ought to come back. And they find out all the things that are happening with the parks and recreation department, but they do always love working with the clay and making mm -hmm. cups and bowls, whatever they decide that that figure might be. And they laugh and pick up pick at each other. And I used to do it, but they used to really laugh at mine, so I don't do it anymore. I just sort of look at, at their their things. But that's fun. But the water plant Okay. to them is a lot of fun too because when they see the different chemicals that go in the water and how the water is processed that's that's usually fun mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. And folks really connect with you being the coordinator of the program as well. Yeah. You yeah, always do something great for uh, Loretta. But what's the criteria also for getting involved in the Citizens Academy? Are there any restrictions? You have to be a citizen of Rocky Mount. Mm -hmm. Uh, for citizens, but our employees, and we encourage them to participate, uh, they can come uh, no matter where they live. Okay. Because it's important, I think, for our citizens to have this knowledge of not just the services that they provide in their department, but in other departments as well. And I think this is great too for folks who have just moved to the area. I know in previous classes you've had people who just moved from Charlotte or other areas mm -hmm. who attended too, so that's a great thing. Now, tell me a little bit about how that graduation ceremony works too. That's a fun mm -hmm. activity. Uh, the participants get an opportunity to invite a family member or a friend, and they do um, several things before the graduation, they have their superlative list. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't know who's gonna get what as far as the person that asked the most questions, the person that may be late sometimes, uh, the person that's uh, that does that's funny and, and those kind of things. They judge the, the participants and we get to read that uh, in the very end. But also, uh, they select a participant to speak on their behalf, and they don't know who that's gonna be either other than the person that's actually doing that. So that person makes a speech on behalf of the participants. Um, we have a presentation from the mayor and our city manager, and any participant that has talent and wants to either sing or do a, do a uh, do spoken word or things of that nature. They do that too. So it's a it's a fun activity, uh, and they get a chance to finally see their cups and bowls and those things that they've made. <laughs> it's kind of sad for me because I I come become so attached to the members, and uh, and that's kind of my last time seeing them as a group. But it's a, a good affair and they get certificates and, and a number of other things. So they always enjoy mm -hmm. that graduation. And that's held at the 
Boogity Theater, and a number of them have not been there either, so that's an opportunity for them to see, see our theater. And I have to mention, too, put in a plug for TV19, because if folks want to, they'll be on camera as well and be, will be recognized mm -hmm. on uh, TV19, and too. And they so, love that. Yeah, most of them love that. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say, no, they love it. <laughs> but um, is there a fee for getting involved, and how can folks register? Okay. The, uh, we are recruiting right now. The mm -hmm. applications are being mailed out and it's online. And of course, if people will, will call me at 972-1354, I'll be happy to send them an application. In the next couple of weeks, I'll actually be downstairs okay. here at City Hall and um, we'll have applications available. The deadline for applications is February the 12th. So we need to have those applications in by then. But we want people to come. And uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago about people that are just moving to the area. It's important because a number of the citizens that have gone through the academy that, uh, that are new, they said it was the best thing for them. Mm -hmm. But also persons that have been here for a number of years, they have taken it too. In fact, the majority of the, the folks that have taken, and we have uh, over 100 participants, uh, most of them have lived here for years and they just want to know what, what services we provide and they've mm -hmm. enjoyed that. And I have to give a plug to um, Charlene Wilkins. Charlene is the, <clears throat> is the secretary for the city manager, and she's been here 25 plus years. Mm -hmm. She took it. Okay. Because, and I was just so proud, because she wanted to know more about um, departments other than her own, and she said she learned so much. And the city clerk went through, mm -hmm. went through the, uh, the program as well. So people that have been here, uh, they have so much to learn. Mm -hmm. And when I first took it, and I had been here 30 some years, I learned, you know, a number of things about services that are provided by other employees other than those in, in the department where I am. Mm -hmm. and, and how does that schedule work? Because it starts March 5th? March 3rd. March 3rd. Mm -hmm. And it goes through what date? And, and then tell me about the times. Through May 12th. Uh, those are the weeks that, it's 10 weeks as I mentioned. And we, the uh, sessions start at six, and they go through nine o'clock. Now all of them don't don't last until nine. You mm -hmm. know, some of them, some of the sessions we get out a little early. But we feed, we provide dinner for the participants at five thirty, mm -hmm. and they tell me that we have the best meals. Mm -hmm. That's always something that everybody <laughs> talks about. But we we feed at five thirty, and then we go into the different sessions, and uh, they are through by nine o'clock. Okay, and it's always is it still on a Thursday? It is a Thursday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Loretta. Anything else you want to add? Well. Um, I would encourage citizens to become involved because it is a, a learning process. And I do want to say, I mentioned the boards and commissions. We have about 10 folks right now that have gone through the academy that now serve on various boards and commissions. And they were so happy to learn about those boards and uh, they are working diligently you know, serving on those boards. Well, that sounds good. Folks mm -hmm. want to know how to be involved. This is how this you is start. This is a good, yeah. good way to do it. Okay, thank you mm -hmm. so much for being a part of the show. Thank you. All Enjoy right, it. thank you for tuning in as well. Don't forget to log on to our website, RockyMountNC.gov, to find out how you can get that application to register for the Citizens Academy. Don't forget it's due February 12th. More of City Beat is coming up next, so you can find out about our additional Citizens Academies. When a child or teenager says, there's nothing to do in the Twin Counties, why don't you say which of the 1,500 youth programs in Edgecombe and Nash should I sign you up for? How many entrepreneurs took the leap and opened their own companies in the Twin Counties last year? 120 did, because we're really getting down to business in Edgecombe and Nash Counties. Want to visit all the parks in the Twin Counties? Better wear comfortable shoes because you'll be going to 59 parks spread over 883 acres in Edgecombe and Nash.
Hello and welcome back to City Beat. I'm your host, Tamika Keenan Norman, and today's show focuses on all the academies offered by the City of Rocky Mount. And thanks to Loretta Braswell, because if you're just tuning in, she's the coordinator for our Citizens Academy, if you want to know how government works. And if you want to know how our police department functions, Yvette Jones is here with us today to tell us all about that. Hello and welcome to City Beat. Hello, Tamika. How are you? I'm doing well. You've been on the show before, so uh -huh. folks may remember you. But tell us a little bit about what you do for the city and what your role is with um, our Citizens Police Academy. And you also handle the Junior Police Academy, That's too. That's correct. Okay. I'm the Community Services Manager, and I oversee our school resource officers. I also supervise our public housing officer and our community resource officer. Um, in addition to supervising those individuals, I oversee our community outreach uh, services and programs. So, and that includes the Citizens Police Academy and Junior Police Academy. So you've got a lot of stuff going on there. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about those two academies that are under your purview. Well, the Citizens Police Academy started back in 1998 here in Rocky Mount mm -hmm. as a result of seeing other agencies working on building their relationships in the community uh, across the country and also here in, in North Carolina. And so we decided we wanted to do something to bring our citizens in and um, build relationships and, and teach them about what we do. Mm -hmm. So our Citizens Junior Police Academy is an offspring from our Citizens Academy. We're having such a success with our adults attending our Citizens Academy. We decided in 2001 that we would introduce our Junior Police Academy to teens. So since 1998 and 2001, we've been running this program very successfully. Yeah, it's had to have been a success for you to uh, carry it on for so long. Tell me how that schedule works for you in terms of what folks can expect to learn once they attend these academies. As far as the Citizens Police Academy, the topics are um, geared towards things that we feel that would be uh, interesting in them. We try to keep topics that are fresh and mm -hmm. uh, up to date and interesting. Um, subject control and arrest techniques. People always wonder, well, why didn't the officer, you know, do this? This or that. Officers go through training to learn how to take someone into custody uh, properly. And so we teach that in our academy to our citizens. We also talk about arrest, search, and seizure laws. We even have someone come in from our professional standards office and talk about things that officers do that if they want to file a complaint that are not correct, or if the officer went over and beyond how to file a combination for an officer that they feel deserves it. Mm -hmm. so, so we cover a variety of different topics. For our Junior Police Academy, we try to make topics um, that would be interesting to them as well. Uh, we do presentations, but after we do the presentations, we try to have hands-on exercises or competitions that they can do mm -hmm. to actually put their knowledge they've learned to practice. Mm -hmm. And so how are you determining these topics? Like are you getting feedback from previous participants? Because like you said, hands-on is really important, especially for the younger audience too. That's correct. We do evaluations forms on all of our topics that we teach and we look at those at the end of the academy to see what they like and what didn't work. So the next academy, if that didn't work or they don't like that, we can you know replace that topic mm -hmm. with something that they may suggest from that uh, evaluation. Now have things as far as what you're what you've offered those sessions that you've offered have they changed as a result some of, of some of the incidents that have taken place like the Trayvon Martin case and Sandra Bland and things in Chicago has the focus kind of shifted a little bit for you I think it has, but I think those topics have always been our focus mm -hmm. because we know people want to know about use of force. We know people want to know about what they need to do if they feel that something's not right and they want to be able to express themselves without feeling retaliation from the department. So yes, we try to keep them fresh and up to date. Um, but again, we I think we've always focused on what the citizens want to know and not just what we want to tell them. Right. And so we listen to them and we've always implemented those things, I think, in our academy that would help teach them to be um, better citizens and also help us keep the city safe. 
Gotcha. Now, um, have you ever had a past participant come to you and say, hey, as a result of these academies, I went on to pursue a career in law enforcement? Oh, yes, yes. Um, with our Citizens Police Academy and our Junior Police Academy, we have officers that are with us in other agencies. We also have people that go on in our Sheriff Department and be deputies, and okay. also with how the State Highway Patrol. So we're very proud when we have citizens that not only come and gain knowledge to become better citizens, but also choose this as a career. That's a good thing. It is. To see that. Uh, Loretta mentioned something interesting during her interview, and that was that you know, as a result of the Citizens Academy, folks are somewhat ambassadors for the city of Rocky Mount. Do you find that that happens as well as a result of your police academy? I think that probably 90% of the people that attend our Citizens Police Academy and our Junior Police Academy come from hearing about a friend or neighbor mm -hmm. or church member or relative that's participated before. They may have come to their graduation or they may have said, you know, I'm going to Citizens Police Academy on Tuesday and they heard about this program and they, the person that attended enjoyed it so much that that person wanted to come and learn about it as well. Mm -hmm. So I think 90% of our participants come from people that they know they've already participated. So that's good. So it's yes. word of mouth. Word, word of mouth, mouth helps a yes, lot. And going out there and influencing other people. So how does your schedule work? Um, is there a particular day that folks are going to come to the sessions? And what are those times? Now, our Citizens Police Academy, we hold that in the spring. It always starts on the first Tuesday in April, and it runs for six weeks. The classes are offered in the morning from 9 a.m. until 12 noon, and then the evening classes are held 6 to 9. So you could choose to either come in the morning or the evening, whichever works best for your schedule. Okay. As far as the Junior Police Academy, we always hold a session the last week in June, mm -hmm. the last full week in July, and we pick about 20 kids, uh, first come, first serve, that would like to participate in this academy. It's held Monday through Friday for one week from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. So they can either come the last full week in June or the last full week in July. And, and what's the criteria for getting getting involved in both academies? Now, with the Junior Police Academy, we accept the applications. They have to fill out a personal health history form and a waiver form. They also have to pay a $35 registration fee. Because they're with us for eight hours, that fee covers meals and also any supplies and equipment and things like that that we need. Okay. They also get a T-shirt okay. as a part of their uniform. Um, and it's first come, first serve. As far as the Citizens Police Academy, they have to turn in an application and waiver as well. They don't have a fee, but they have to either live, work, or have some type of vested interest in the Rocky Mount community. And we do they do undergo a background check, a criminal background check. Okay. Anything else that you want to add, Yvette? I'm just excited about the both the academies. We hope this year that we fill up uh, our Citizens Police Academy more than an even session mm -hmm. with citizens who want to learn more about their local law enforcement agency and what we do and what they can do to help keep Rocky Mount safer. And then with our Junior Police Academy, we just want young people that can come in and have fun, learn more about be um, good citizens mm -hmm. and they also you know may even choose to become police officers that sounds good because so many have that's right <laughs> sounds like so uh, if folks want to know some additional information or, or want to fill out an application where should they go um, they can call me at 252-972-1436 or they can email me at yvette.jones at rockymountnc.gov and that's Y-V-E-T-T-E -T -T -E dot J-O-N-E-S at RockyMountNC.gov. Or they can go to our website, which is RockyMountNC forward slash police, and go out on our community programs page and download the forms and, and then send them in or bring them into the office. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show thank today. Thank you for having us. I hope you'll have another successful year for your academy. Thank you. All right. We'll be back in just a few moments with more of City Beat. We're going to speak with Kimberly Wittig about our Citizens Fire Academy. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be right back. How many students attend colleges in the Twin Counties? You'll be pleased to learn 27,000 total students are enrolled in all of the colleges in Nash and Edgecombe. 
If you're seeking a house of worship in the Twin Counties, count your blessings because in Nash and Edgecombe, there are 263 churches serving 45 different denominations. Do you know how many children play in teams in the Twin Counties? Well, 2,500 kids are learning to be good sports in athletic leagues all across Nash and Edgecombe. Hello, I'm your host, Tamika Keenan Norman, and you're watching City Beat. A little earlier, Loretta Braswell came on and told us about the Citizens Academy. We also heard from Yvette Jones about our Citizens Police Academy and our Junior Police Academy. And finally, Definitely not least, though, we're going to talk about our <laughs> Citizens Fire Academy with Kimberly Whitting. That was a mouthful, girl. <laughs> Welcome to City Beat. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. First of all, tell me a little bit about what you do and your role with the Citizens Fire Academy. Okay. Um, well, my official title with the fire department, it's Fire and Life Safety Educator. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is coordinate all the public education activities that go on with the fire department. And, of course, Citizens Fire Academy falls under that. So I pretty much organize. Um, and coordinate getting their applications in, setting our agenda, where we're going to meet each week, who's going to teach that week. So I basically coordinate the whole thing. Uh, the attendees would probably tell you my most important role is making sure they get fed every week. So <laughs> they, I'm in charge of making sure they eat every week. So, um, But basically just coordinate the overall effort of the entire thing. So I'm the go-to person if there are any issues or scheduling and that kind of thing. Now when does the Academy officially start this year? Uh, we always start um, the Monday after Labor Day. So this year to be September the 12th and it's an eight week academy. Uh, we have our graduation on the eight w eighth week and as I was preparing for this interview I was looking at those dates and the eighth week this year is actually on Halloween. Hmm. So I think we may have to skip and do graduation the following week because nobody's going to want to be out on Halloween. So, <laughs> um, But it starts on September the 12th and we do Monday nights uh, from 6 to 9 and we usually will eat a light dinner around 5 30 and then we start class at 6. Okay. Now, I, I know you won't be able to tell me your agenda at this point, but mm -hmm. can you give me sort of an idea of what folks will learn when sure. they come to the academy? Um, the first night we spend giving them some history and background on the fire department and how mm -hmm. it has evolved from when it was first started in 1924. And then um, we move into the hiring process so they learn what it takes to become a firefighter. And then we learn all about the equipment at the stations and the various trucks and what functions they serve. We learn about our special teams that we have in the fire department. Um, they actually learn hands-only CPR and learn how to use defibrillators. They learn how to use fire extinguishers. Um, we do a whole section on public education and fire prevention. And then our fire marshal's office does investigations. Um, let me think what else. they. Um, and then it culminates with a live burn. So at the end, uh, oh, they also do vehicle extrication so they get to see them cut a car like they would at a car crash and then the last night we do a live burn where they get to see them actually fight fire. So, so this gives folks an idea as well of what you do because what you do encompasses so much. Yes. And, and I think individuals don't really realize how much the fire department does. That's true and I'll tell you overwhelmingly every single week somebody will come up to me after class and say I had no idea the fire department did that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very enlightening for our citizens to learn all the various services and things that we do on a daily basis that they didn't equate necessarily with the fire department being in charge of that. So it's very enlightening for them, I think, to see their tax dollars at work mm -hmm. and to see the various services and things that we do each day. Gotcha. So you have so many fire stations within the city, mm -hmm. so where do you hold these classes? We actually try to rotate around to different stations so they do get to see some of the various stations. The first First night when we do history, we actually also do a driving tour, so they okay. see all the stations and where they're located, and it kind of helps them put into perspective which one is closest to where they live, and so which one may be responding to them if mm -hmm. they actually had a call. Uh, so we do that, but then we try to rotate around and let them see some of the various stations. 
We use Station 7 quite a bit because it has that nice meeting room, so that's nice for us because we have a lot of space there. But um, And some of our other smaller stations aren't quite as conducive to a large crowd, but we try to squeeze them in just so they do get to see um, you know, the fire station itself and that these guys live in that station and how they live and work in that environment. And, and again, they're not living the life of luxury at a fire station, so you know they have the essentials and what they need, but um, it, again, it just gives them an outlook on their tax dollars at work and, and how it's all coming together. So. so is there a fee involved in, in getting into the program? There is no fee. The only requirement we have is that you be 18 years old mm -hmm. and uh, we will do just a background check on everybody just to make sure that um, we've got folks that are not going to come to the fire station and you know wreak havoc or anything like that. So uh, but 18 years old is the only requirement and there's no fee. Um, it's all a part of again the services that we offer doing this education and this outreach. I'm wondering, do you have, because you've been doing this for how long? Uh, this will actually be our seventh academy. We started this in 2010, mm -hmm. and so this will be our seventh one coming up this fall, and um, so we're excited about that, that it's we've been able to keep it going, that we still have the interest in people that want to come and, and participate. And you've been over it that entire time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So do you have any personal stories to share? Maybe there was someone who um, was involved in the academy who decided that this is what they want for their career? Um, um, we haven't had anybody that I'm aware of. We've we've started in the past two academies. We had a couple of younger people. Up until that point, most of our participants have been older adults that are pretty set in their career, or maybe gotcha. they're retired. So we'd like to get some younger people involved in hopes that that would happen. Um, we have had a participant that actually had a house fire after they were in Citizens Fire Academy, and um, I can't equate anything that we did or that they learned in the academy to saving their life, but I think it, um, after that experience, they were certainly more well aware of what was happening when the fire department got there and how those things take place mm -hmm. and um, the services that we offer. So um, the other piece to that too is we've been able to install a lot of smoke alarms for the folks who've come through our academy. Who and that's one of the things we teach and you know we talk about life safety things, but a lot of people don't know that if your smoke alarm is older than 10 years old, it's time to get rid of it and get a new one. And so we've been able to install a lot of new smoke alarms for families and participants through that academy so while we don't have a true documented save yet I think the potential certainly is there based on some things they've learned or services we've been able to provide for them because you know they came to us through the academy and I know it's refreshing to know that it is it is yeah. and that's why we do what we do you know certainly you know the young folks are all excited about going to fight fire us older folks are trying to do everything we can to keep from having to fight right, fire right. because it is so devastating so it's nice to have this opportunity to be able to reach out to those folks and hopefully teach them some things or provide some services for them that will help and prevent some of those things from happening okay so if someone is interested what should they do is there a number they can call or they can actually call me at my office and my number is 9721379 or as the time gets a little closer we put a link up on our web page mm -hmm. with the application on there that they can download and fill out and that's RockyMountFire.org so they can reach us at either one of those places. All right. Anything else that you want to add, Kim? Um, we're just so excited for the opportunity, and, and again, that we still have the interest, and people are still interested. And I just want to compliment Loretta and also Yvette, because the three of us actually work really closely in trying to feed one another participants, and I think it's worked out well that we all, because a lot of the folks that come to us have been through the Police Academy, or they've been through Loretta Citizens Academy, so we try to help one another out and you know let each other know about participants, and we've gotten a lot of good folks that way, but um, just hope that people will still continue to have the interest and want to do it. Well, thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you for having me. And thank you for tuning in as well to another edition of City Beat. Don't forget you can find out about all the academies by logging on to our website at RockyMountNC.gov. Thanks once again to Kim Wittick, Loretta Braswell, and Yvette Jones for joining us on the show today. Thanks. This is another edition of City Beat. I'm your host, Tamika Keenan-Norman.